so hello guys welcome back to my channel hope you are doing extremely well so today solving the love bubble dsc sheet we are struck at the problem find if there is any sub array with sum equals to zero let's see what does the problem say the problem says that if there is an array you have to say if there exists a sub array whose sum uh, whose uh, elements give a sum of zero okay i think you are agreed with the problem now though for those of you who you don't who don't know sub array is a contiguous part of an array contiguous part of an array that is let me mark the all the sub arrays here for you this one is a sub array 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 then starting from 2 only 2 then so on up till 6 these are all the sub arrays present in the present in an array okay so how do we approach this problem what is the brute force approach for this problem? The brute force approach says that first find all the sub arrays then check if any of them has sum equals to 0. But what is the time complexity for this one? Let's analyze the time complexity for this problem, for this approach actually. So for finding the sub arrays, I've discussed in many of my previous videos also. Let's see how can we find the some uh, all the sub arrays. For that, what do we have to do? We have to run a loop going from zero up till the last element, and inside it we have to use another loop going from zero going from i plus 1 sorry until the last element now here we will get all the sub arrays that is i to j will give us all the sub arrays okay i have shown many times that uh, what is the time complexity for this kind of situation it is o of n square if you still want an explanation i will provide a description uh, a link in the description which will show you the uh, time complexity analysis of this type of sub -prob, this type of problem okay but as you see the questions demand and time complexity of o of n and nothing greater than that okay so how do we approach it we have to use an efficient approach let's come to the optimized approach for this problem Optimus approach says that in the first step initialize the sum as 0 okay and keep a map okay now for i going from 0 up to the last element in uh, in the loop the first step will be to increment our sum okay now if sum becomes equals to equals to 0 that means the sum from the element 0 up till the ith element will be equal to 0 in that case it turns true straight away no need to go further else if the sum we calculated does exist in the map if map contains sum beforehand then also we have to return true why that the intuition behind this is suppose you are given an array okay and this is the array you have been given suppose for some i the sum is uh, say x okay and now for this j the sum is x again the sum is accounting the if you observe clearly what is the sum here sum it represents the sum of element represents 
the sum of elements in the sub array 0 up till i am i clear okay that is why we return 0 that is why we return true when we counted sum equals to equal to 0 now if map contains some we have to return true why suppose sum is x here and x here that means 0 to y is also x and 0 to j is also x let me mark the uh, values here as a b c so if i represent sum of j sum at j is equal to sum of i plus a plus b plus c correct absolutely correct now sum of i is equal to sum of j so we cut it down so if we get a plus b plus c equals to zero now is it a sub array yeah it is a sub array so i think that we have found a match that a b c is a sub array with sum equals to zero in that case you have to return true okay i i think you have got the intuition behind this statement be, uh, behind the statement let me make some space for the else one else what you have to do is else uh, store the sum into the map simple if you have not encountered any x before then you store x in the map for the future references this is the whole problem okay let's see it for the example desk is given to us by the gfg only that is 4 2 minus 3 1 6 let's see the dry run for it yeah at first we initialize sum as 0 okay and map is empty at the moment now let me mark the indices i is equal to 0 1 2 3 4 for i equals to 0 sum plus equals to 4 so sum will become 4 4 does not exist in map beforehand so map will have to increment have to include 4 so 4 comes into the map i don't care what is the second value i just need to know if the uh, sum is existing in the map okay then for i equals to 1 existing sum is 4 plus 2 it becomes 6 6 is not present beforehand so 6 present here okay then for 2 4 plus 2 minus 3 that is 6 minus 3 is 3 3 is also not present so 3 comes here okay moving to third now existing sum is 3 plus 1 gives us 4 now if i see 4 is already present here so i have to return true okay this is my dry run i hope the intuition behind the problem and the approach is clear to you let's come down to the code quickly the code is also actually very simple what we have to do is create an unordered map type into int i'm naming it as mp and create a sum initialize a zero startingly now initialize a loop for the whole traversal the first step was to increment the sum after that if sum equals to equals to zero in that case it untrue now if mp dot find sum is not equal to mp dot n that is we have found an element that is equal to equal to sum in that case it done true else mp of sum equals to 1 at last if return true is not executed anytime we have to return false as we have not not left with any other edge cases let's see if it works for the problem compiler yes it is running oh sorry for the for the submit let's see the output running fine thank you for watching the video hope you liked it if you liked it please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for such amazing content and keep practicing dsa okay thank you